It's big, it's bad, and now it's sporting 37-inch tires. This is the new Ford Raptor. We check out all the features and then put it up against the Rattler. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. For 2021, Ford's immensely popular F-150 Raptor gets a number of significant updates, including a redesigned rear suspension setup. It now employs a five-link design with extra long trailing arms and 24-inch coil springs. It also gets a factory option for 37-inch all-terrain tires. More than just rubber, this option includes different shocks and subframe to handle the stresses unique to the larger tire option, in addition to including extra space for the massive spare. Like previous Raptors, this truck is fully kitted for desert runs, including a factory skid plate, rigid fog lights, and recovery hooks. Our test vehicle also included rapid red paint, the Power Tech package, 37 package, and spray and bed liner for an MSRP of $82,475, US dollars, including destination. Under the hood is a 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 engine good for 450 peak horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission mated to a dual-range four-wheel drive system with four low, shift-on-the-fly automatic, and a long list of terrain modes. EPA rates this setup at 15 miles to the gallon in town and 16 on the highway. Towing capacity is rated at 8,200 pounds. And yes, those side vents are functional, allowing hot air to exit the engine bay. Available only as a Super Crew cab with a five and a half foot bed, the power gate opens easily and can be adjusted for various loads. I find this pullout step to be on the fussy side, but it does provide easy access to the bed. Ford's Pro Power System can make the Raptor act like a generator, providing up to two kilowatts of electricity in the field, making this fun truck kind of practical too. Now let's look inside. Okay, climb on up. So this is obviously a massive cabin. I have so much room here. I can sit back, room for a beverage. I have USB as well as AC power and two stages of heat. Yeah, this is a really nice place to hang out. Fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. Second row also can convert into convenient storage. Plus there's a bin down here that can be folded up uh, to help contain smaller objects. Oh, hello. This is so much nicer of an interior than the old Raptor. It is really quite amazing, astonishing even, how far car makers have come. This thing just feels so massive on the inside. This steering wheel is oversized. I mean, I'm six foot one and I feel small in this thing. And I'm so far off the ground. Did you know this with 37s has more than 13 inches of ground clearance? That's nuts. So let's talk about this interior. There's lots of really nice touches. The metal here is beautiful. Carbon fiber inlaid in the dash. Uh, the leather on the shifter and on the steering wheel is all premium. Buttons nicely integrated. Paddle shifters, really big meaty ones. Yeah, this is cool. Um, also, because this is based on the new F-150, it gets some of its party tricks, such as the fold down shift lever, which can be converted into a desktop. Sure, it's one more thing that can break but it's pretty cool, right? These seats are super cushy. I have tons of electric options as far as setting them up, uh, and they're also cooled and heated. And yeah, the steering wheel gets heat as well. This also has, yeah, the hits keep coming. Um, we also have a charging pad for mobile devices, and yeah, this does work with both Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. 
This does include the latest version of Ford's sync system, and it is really quite nice. We explored this in depth with the review of the F-150 Hybrid. If you wanna go deep into this one, check out that review also on this channel. But right off the bat, we have some really nice navigation. We got lots of apps, we got lots of settings, we have lots of features, including driver assistance. Now this thing does come fully packed. Cruise control is adaptive, speed limit assist, lane keep assist, blind spot information, parking sensors, cross traffic alerts, rear view camera, surround view, you name it, it's in this truck. The version we're driving today does have the built-in AC inverter, fine enough for daily uses. We have lots of zone lighting, lots of lights, and then towing stuff to assist with towing, such as sway control and uh, trailer light checks. They have almost thought of everything here. And of course, because this is designed for off-road fun, uh, it even has trail control as well as one pedal drive. Like most modern vehicles, this has tons of drive modes. So you don't have to understand how all these off-road components work to be able to actually drive this thing off-road. Uh, it is designed for even beginners to have a good time. This is equipped with a part or full-time four-wheel drive system. Um, I'm driving in too high right now for the best fuel economy. And yeah, you're looking at 15 MPGs combined in two-wheel drive. Um, I can optionally go into four high, four low, or four automatic. There's just a lot of stuff in here. I don't have all day to cover everything. I know what you really wanna see is some driving. So let's do that. Then we floor it. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now, the interesting thing here with the new Raptor for 2021, 2022, etc., is the fact that it is really not that much different than the old Raptor on paper. You still have a twin turbocharged six, you still have a 10 speed automatic transmission but we have more peak output out of the engine, which is nice. And of course, the interior is all completely redone because this is of course built on the newer F-150. And everything benefits from that, everything from the navigation system to the active safety. And let's try out some of that. Setting the active safety, I just hit go, I hit set. I make sure my lane detect is turned on and we'll just set a target speed of, let's just say 70 miles an hour. Now at this point, it's gonna detect the lanes, it's gonna trace in the middle. I'm gonna take my hands off merely for demonstration purposes. Do not try this at home. And you can see that it's really doing a good job of keeping dead center. Now, why would you want a feature like this? Well, for doing long road trips, it really cuts down on all those little micro movements that you have to do, which basically means that you can get from point A to point B and be more relaxed. Now, I, I hear some of you guys are like, well, you know, why would I get a Raptor if the TRX is a thing that exists? Well, you know, Ford hears you and their answer to that is going to be the Raptor R, but that's not out yet. That's coming out in 2022. I've already driven the Bronco quite a bit, even the model with the Sasquatch package, which is of course the big tires. And I have to say, this is so much more pleasant on the freeway. A fully enclosed cab like this, it's just quieter. Honestly, if they made the Bronco with a fully enclosed cab like this, I would be all over it. But with the convertible top, yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. It's just too loud. This, on the other hand, though, oh, this is such a pleasure to drive if you have the space to drive it because this thing is huge. Take an F-150, add six more inches of width. This thing is massive. So on a side road like this, very comfortable to drive. I have everything in good reach. These paddle shifters feel amazing. But of course, in regular drive mode isn't really where they shine. I really need to go into sport mode. So I move the dial counterclockwise, I'm in sport, and now the adaptive suspension is gonna firm up a little bit, my throttle is gonna be sharper, and the exhaust is gonna sound more awesome. 
Do we have any opera fans in the house? Oh, so nice. I kind of wish it was louder in the cabin though. Enough of this, let's try a 0260. I'm going to put the vehicle into four automatic and it's already in sport mode. Go. And 65.7 seconds. This thing's quick. For as big as this is, it's pretty amazing. Okay, now let's jump back on the freeway and head out to our test hill. Okay, so let's see if I even fit onto the Rattler. The Rattler is, of course, one of our most challenging courses. I did not really plan on it for something quite this big. Oh my gosh, I need to put cameras on because I cannot see anything out there. Camera. I don't want to chonk the nose and I also don't want to fall off the side. Oh, this is so big. Um, you know, when you take an F-150 and you make it wider, yeah, that, that can be a challenge. Oh, I think we can fit up here. Yeah. So the course is obviously very, very muddy. This vehicle is equipped with KO2 all-terrain tires. That is one of the more aggressive all-terrain tires you can buy. Ideally, we would actually have mud terrains here. I think it'll do just fine. So let's see. That is if we can actually get up the course physically because massive vehicle. I know I've said that multiple times, but this thing is just a honker. I want to see my off-road information on the display in the middle. So I'm going to switch this now to rock crawl. I can't tell you what a confidence booster 13 plus inches of ground clearance is. It just really makes you feel like you can get over anything. So again, I'm in rock crawl mode, which will lock the rear differential, put the suspension in the softest setting because it is adaptive suspension now. Um, I also get this display here because I hit the little trail control button, uh, which shows me the tracks of my wheels. Where other vehicles really struggle just to get over the very first obstacle, this one, it's just easy. It's so easy. You can pick your line and just commit to it, and I feel like the Raptor will get you over it. So do I prefer this over a Bronco? Oh yeah, definitely prefer this over a Bronco. If I was spending this much money, I would get this over a Bronco any day of the week. Now granted, you can get a Bronco for way cheaper. So you don't have to spend this much money, as much money as you do on a Raptor to get a Bronco. Um, but I think if I was like fully loading up the Bronco, I would get this instead. Um, also, these really do a good job of retaining their value, it seems. I've had friends who have bought them and sold them and actually lost very little in the resale. Okay, and then the final climb where uh, I'm just gonna ignore the road and make my own road because Raptor. Oh, and I gotta watch that. Oh. <laughs> Dude, this is so much fun. You know, it's doing pretty good. I'm really curious if I can do the Sidewinder in these messy, slimy conditions. Um, it is really slimy out here. And we do have a plan uh, to modify this course, but we're not there yet. You see, I put an offer on the adjacent property and I want to expand. So before I do any other stuff here, uh, I want to be able to expend, extend some of the courses over so we do it all at once. So for those of you who are curious, why haven't we fixed this yet for this type of weather? It's because of that. Oh, barely getting around. Now for this thing, I can't really slow down because of the mud. So I am just plowing over everything. And the suspension, the ground clearance, the tires, they all make this possible. Okay, but some vehicles will get stuck, even a Raptor. 
Yeah, this is slimy. Uh, I think we're gonna just do deep snow sand and let those wheels spin. Putting me into four high. Can I just spin my way to freedom? I just keeping the throttle in? No, that's not gonna work. Try to get a little bit on the crowning here. And I'm just sliding left. Okay, let's try to reposition ourselves. And I do have a big barbed wire fence right behind me that I'm trying not to get scratched on. Yes, power, power. Okay, well, so I'm gonna do slippery. I'm gonna do, I don't want four auto, I actually want four low. Shift into neutral, still gotta do that. Transfer case, okay. And now let's see if slippery, if we can actually do with less power. Okay, that's not gonna work. Let's back up just a little bit. Try to get onto a crown here a little bit. Oh, it's so slippery. And a little throttle. I feel like we're just digging our hole. Oh, 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 we got this, we got this. I don't want to hit that fence. I'm trying to, oh, fence, 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 fence. That is a very sharp barbed wire fence. Shrubbery, skip the shrubbery. I think I actually need my max tracks, like seriously. Okay, so let's set this up. I'm still in slippery, four low. I think that seems good. I'm gonna wanna actually go much slower than I just did because that was, uh, that was not ideal. Now we have a pair of uh, max tracks. Any brand will do kind of, although max tracks are kind of the, the best, most expensive brand one of the better brands, uh, nice and big. So that should actually, putting that under the tire should give me something to grip on. Okay. Ha! And that's the new Ford Raptor with the optional 37 inch tire package. Though very few buyers actually need this level of capability, it's really great to see Ford answer the call and provide an option that is more than just big tires. From the suspension adjustments to the larger spare tire well, the Raptor 37 is the complete package. Is this Raptor still the best choice in fun trucks? Post a comment below. Also, please like, subscribe, and share this video. We make them for you and we hope you enjoy them. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching.